Hi, welcome back to Fire for Effect. Today we're going to talk about how to use the do-it-yourself muzzle brake kit that we're selling for the Vepers. Uh, what I have here is a Vepper 545 by 39 rifle. This one already has been threaded, but I'm going to walk you back through the threading process to show you how I did it uh, using the kit that you've just purchased. The kit that you purchased will come as such. You're going to have a muzzle brake, thread alignment tool, and a set of shims. The thread alignment tool has been custom manufactured to match this brake. It has also been, uh, the shims have also been custom cut to match this barrel and the brake that you're going to be mounting up. So again, you get three components. The muzzle brake itself, you can see, has been re-threaded. The thread alignment tool has a hex head in the, in the uh, end of it. This will thread smoothly into the brake you've just purchased, just like that. And this has been custom cut to the same bore that you're, that you're uh, attempting to re-thread. So it slides in just like that. The shims are color-coded so that you can tell one from the other. You have a 1 millimeter, a 0 .5, 2.2s, and 2.1 millimeter shims. That combination should allow you to get this thing clocked to the perfect 12 o'clock position. Remember that you do want these two ports at 12 o'clock. So let's talk about how we're going to do this. Step one with your normal Vepr. We want to start as with any weapon. We're going to check it see if it's loaded. I'm going to check. Check the chamber. I've got no magazine in it, no rounds in it. Step two, I'm going to check it again, make sure it's still unloaded. Weapons unloaded, we're now going to start our modification. Now, you can disassemble the rifle if you'd like to make it easier to work with, lighter, that's fine. You don't have to. Uh, on this demonstration video, I'm not going to disassemble it any further than what you see right now. We're going to pretend that the end of this barrel has not been threaded already. Imagine it being smooth like the barrel of your, your current Vepr. Step one we got to remove this front sight. The front sight has a pin that moves from right to left. I'll show you a little better video here. You've got the pin right there. It's going to be moved from this side to this side. We've got to press that out of there. This can be somewhat cumbersome. This can be somewhat difficult. What I've done is I've taken a regular punch one like this, which you will quickly bend and make unusable if you try to use it. And I have cut it down. Cut it down short. You can use a saw, a grinder, whatever. Take it down to a very short length so it's not as likely to flex on you. And that's going to be what you're going to want to press. And again, you'll go from right to left. We'll insert on the right side here. We'll insert right here at the pin. Once it's in there, then we're going to basically just give this a nice tapping motion. Obviously, you want to try and uh, support the barrel. You don't want to be putting any undue lateral uh, tension on this barrel. If you have a hydraulic press or an arbor press where you can fine-tune the amount of pressure you're putting on it, that would be ideal. So step one, we would take push this pin out and, uh, and move on. So let's, let's do that. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and move over here to... My, my smithing block. I'm going to place the weapon on the smithing block as such. I'm going to get my hammer. All right, and once I have my hammer, we'll come around and hold this for you. Thank you. Again, I'm going to place my pin here cautiously, and we're just going to. We got that started. Good. Once you get it started, it is a tapered pin, so it's pretty easy to push out once you get it started. There we go. Pins out. And again, there's the pin. Uh, it is a hardened steel. You're not going to damage it. You just got to get it pushed out. And they can be stubborn. They can be tough to get out. When you're all done, you can see there, you've got a clean hole through there. Don't worry about how you're going to line this thing up because the pin, there's actually a saddle in the barrel itself, so the pin's going to do a self-alignment for you. Next step, we've got to get this sight off the barrel. I use a hydraulic press. So let's walk on over to the hydraulic press, and uh, I'll show you the jig that I've used to get these sights off. Okay, so now we're here at the, at the press. I bring my gun up through the press. Place my saddle on each side of the barrel, my yoke here, if you will, 
you know? So once I've got the weapon in the yoke here, I'm going to go ahead, I put out a machined piece of aluminum that I use just to make sure I don't mar up my barrel. And we're going to go ahead and bring that barrel down. Now once I make contact, I make sure my yoke's nice and snug. I'm just going to gently put a little pressure. And what you're going to notice is that it basically takes a little pressure and then it's going to pop right out of there. Okay? Once you get that pop, it's out. That's all you got to do. And we're going to take it down until you get to there. We're going to release. Take our yoke off. And let's go back to the bench. All right. You can see that we've, we've extracted the sight off the front of the barrel as far as we could go until it was flush with the press. Now to finish the job, I'm just going to take a brass hammer and lightly Put a few wraps to it. There we go. All right, so now that our sight's off, we're just going to set it aside. We want to make sure we don't lose our pin. And when you're all said and done here, we would have a nice smooth barrel. Uh, again, we're imagining the threads aren't here yet. So you'll notice here on the top, that's the, that's the notch that that pin goes in. That's what's going to make sure that you're... you're Front sight, your front iron sight is re-clocked to, no, to its uh, original position. Now, once we're uh, once we're back in this position, we're ready to start getting this barrel uh, threaded up. What you're going to do is you're going to take your kit. First thing you're going to do is take your thread alignment tool. Remember, the thread alignment tool, its job is to make sure that the die, which you have to purchase separately, the die gets lined up completely parallel, the bore of it, parallel with the bore of the rifle. So this needs to fit into your bore, and it should be ever so smooth. It shouldn't jerk around a lot. It shouldn't have a lot of play. If for some reason you notice that it moves around a lot, then you've got the wrong part. You either gave us the wrong bore, you ordered the wrong kit, or we sent you the wrong one. Whatever it is, we'll figure it out. We'll get you the right one. But this should be nice and, and machined to a nice close fit, nice close tolerance. Now, once you have that, you're going to need to get your die. Okay, your die should be a 5 8 24 thread. Okay, 5 8 24 thread. Uh, you can buy them online. You can buy them at a lot of local hardware stores. It is a fine thread, so you won't find it at just every hardware store. Um, they're going to need to offer a little bit of a selection in machine tools. The second thing you're going to need is you're going to need an Allen wrench that fits this. Let me grab mine. Okay, so I've got my Allen wrench, and this actually is a 3 8 inch uh, Allen uh, socket here. So this should fit in there just like so. Now ima imagine this should still be smooth. This is smooth on your original barrel. This is the part we're actually going to cut. The diameter of this is about a 15.1 millimeter. That's what makes it so hard to thread. You can't just throw any AK uh, muzzle brake on there. They're designed for a 14.1 left hand thread. We're going to thread this with a 5 8 24 right hand thread. We've taken your brake, the, the AK-74 brake made by TAPCO, and we have re-bored it and re-tapped it to a 5 8 24 right-hand thread. That's what makes this kit work. All right, so now I would take my die. I need to get it on here. So the first thing I would do is you want to get it lined up on your, on your thread alignment tool and begin getting it threaded on there. Okay. Once it threads on, you're just going to have it you see, if, if, you, if you start bringing it on, it's going to start wanting to recut the threads on here just a little bit more. And as such, you're going to need to keep it from spinning. That's where your Allen wrench comes in. Now I can hold it still, and the die 